Clint Eastwood is a legendary actor, visionary, filmmaker, and versatile artist who's been active in the industry for decades. And even though he's 92, he's remained very active in recent years and showed little sign of slowing down. But he's also a well-known car enthusiast and has owned several classic and luxury vehicles over the years. In this video, we'll take a closer look at Eastwood's coveted car collection. Facts First presents, at 92, this is the car Clint Eastwood drives. 1932 Ford Roadster Even though he grew up in a wealthy area of California, young Eastwood didn't study very hard at school. He preferred to hang out with friends and make the rounds at local jazz clubs, all the while holding down a series of short-term jobs, including working as a lifeguard and golf caddy. Because of this, he was never able to afford his childhood dream car, a Ford Roadster Hot Rod. But later in life, after achieving success and wealth, he was finally able to indulge in his childhood aspirations by sourcing himself that long-desired Roadster. 1937 Lincoln K-Series Convertible in the 1982 film Honky Tonk Man, Eastwood portrayed a Great Depression-era Western and country singer who embarked on one last cross-country tour of the nation with his nephew after being diagnosed with tuberculosis. The car Clint drove in that movie was a gorgeous 1937 Lincoln Model K convertible, which featured a V12 6.8-liter engine and was originally unveiled in 1931. The car came to be the manufacturer's crowning achievement during that era, and to this day, it's highly sought after by collectors. Sadly, at the end of Honky Tonk Man, Clint's character ends up dying from TB, but while making the movie, Eastwood enjoyed driving that Lincoln so much, he couldn't resist buying one for himself to add to his ever-growing collection. 1955 Austin Healey 100M after making a splash following its debut at the 1952 Motor Show and making a follow-up appearance in the Le Mans 24 Hours a year later, Austin Healey's stunning new sports car managed to achieve a cult-like following. Donald Healey ended up slapping the 100 on its name to draw attention to its top speed, but that didn't stop the manufacturer from introducing a new and improved high-performance iteration in 1955. The 100M had a tighter suspension, produced 110 brake horsepower, and was deeply loved by both Clint Eastwood and Steve McQueen. No doubt Clint paid for his with the earnings he made in the role of Rowdy Yates in Rawhide. 1955 Cadillac Eldorado Series 62 Convertible In the spring of 1953, Eastwood agreed to go on a blind date with a secretary named Maggie Johnson, and it went quite well. The two young lovebirds ended up getting engaged of October of that year and were married two months later in December. Two years after tying the knot, they welcomed a 1955 Eldorado into their lives. Both Clint and Maggie loved the car immensely. Sure, it might not have been a child, but Eastwood undoubtedly still saw it as his baby. With its 270 horsepower engine, sleek tail fins, and $6,286 price tag, she sure was a beauty. More than three decades later, while quite possibly reflecting on a few fond memories made in that car, Eastwood appeared in the film Pink Cadillac, a comedy about a bounty hunter and a band of neo-Nazis who were searching for an innocent woman. The movie admittedly wasn't that great, but the 1959 Pink Cadillac DeVille featured in it almost made it worth watching. 1960 Jaguar XK150 Roadster after acquiring that Austin Healey, Clint ended up getting his hands on another classic Brit Roadster, the Jaguar XK150. The vehicle was produced between 1957 and 61. Eastwood evidently loved his more than most of the other cars he had in his collection, the Healey included. There were only 9,385 of them ever produced, so Clint was lucky to snag one when he did. The car features a 3.8-liter engine under the hood, capable of producing 220 bhp, and was actually the last of the company's original XK lineup to ever be made. Eastwood was so obsessed with his car, he even ended up including it in the first film he directed, Play Misty For Me. 1966 Morris Mini Countryman Cooper S. In 1966, John Cooper was able to recapture the magic that made his Mini Cooper S such an iconic vehicle when he put out the Morris Mini Countryman. The Countryman was equipped with all the racing gear that the Mini Cooper S featured, but in a mini station wagon form factor. 
Eastwood loved his, especially since there weren't many others like it. In fact, it's said that only six were ever produced, two of which were rumored to have been once owned by Steve McQueen. The Cooper S. Traveler, as it was also known, was originally only offered to customers in white, but they were offered a respray in any color they wanted. Clint opted to paint his British Racing green. 1966 Ferrari 275 GTB Following the profound success of Sergio Leone's spaghetti western films A Fistful of Dollars and For a Few Dollars More, Eastwood was convinced to appear in the final chapter of the Dollars trilogy, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Before agreeing to sign on, however, he was apprehensive. So to sweeten the deal and ensure his participation, the Italian production company offered him a higher salary. After declining that offer, Eastwood was offered a share of the profits. Still, Clint held his ground. Finally, they made him a tantalizing offer that he couldn't refuse, presenting him with a brand new, right off the factory line, Ferrari 275 GTB. And while we can't say for sure that's how things actually unfolded, that's the version of the story that's been repeated over the years, so we're going with it. Alternatively, however, it's been suggested that Eastwood was gifted the Ferrari by producer Dino De Laurentiis as a not-so-little thank you for appearing in his film, The Witches. Regardless of how he added it to his collection, it's obvious that Clint was delighted to finally have his very own Italian luxury sports car. Back in the day, the 275 GTB was cutting edge. It featured a Pininfarina-designed body and a 300 HP engine. Unfortunately for Eastwood, despite having a lot of fun with it, he didn't end up holding onto it. Today, the car is worth upwards of a million dollars. 1972 Gran Torino Sport is Collection 1974 Ferrari 365 GT4 Berlinetta Boxer after developing a taste for Italian sports cars, Eastwood bought a Ferrari Daytona Group 4 race car that he let his buddy Paul Newman race for him. Wanting another Ferrari of his own, Eastwood purchased a 365 GT4 Berlinetta Boxer, Ferrari's first 12-cylinder car with a mid-mounted engine. Clint loved the car, but couldn't stand its roof. So in 1978, he removed the roof, turning it into a convertible of sorts. In 1985, however, he sold it to make room for other additions to his collection. 1992 GMC Typhoon A few years ago, while making an appearance on Jimmy Fallon's The Tonight Show, Clint was asked what car he prefers driving. The then 85-year-old replied by saying he usually drives a GMC Typhoon that's, quote, out of production now. It's a high-performance SUV put out in 1992, and it came equipped with a beefy V6 engine that could go from 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds. Only about 4,700 of them were ever produced. 2014 Fiat 500e while Eastwood has always been a fan of the classics, that doesn't mean he isn't also interested in contemporary vehicles. Clint has been spotted zipping around Los Angeles in an all-electric Fiat 500e. It might be hard for some to accept that Dirty Harry would be caught dead driving a teeny tiny eco-friendly car, but it's the truth. At the end of the day, he's Clint frickin' Eastwood. He's more than earned the right to do what he wants. Now it's time to hear from you. Have you ever seen any of these cars in person? Let us know in the comments section below.